next session today, we're joined by Priyanka Diani and Andy Ford, who present how Mondelez has modernized, modernized their market mix modeling for today's needs and maximize their ROI by integrating new creative di diagnostic data sets. And I can't wait to see this one. I'd like to welcome Andy and Priyanka to the stage. Thanks, Gay. That was a lot of M's you tried to do. I there. did. There was a lot of M's there. I'll hand over to you. Let me see if I can just present quickly now. How am I doing? All there. Cool. Okay. So um, it's great to be back at Measure Up. I'm Andy Ford. I head up marketing science for Facebook ANZ, and I'm joined by Pranka Don, who um, is a growth and analytics lead for Mondelez. And I'll let her introduce herself in a moment. Um, we've been given very strict timelines we have to stick to. So I'm going to sort of rattle through this uh, quickly uh, to get to the good stuff in terms of her explaining the work that, that she's been doing. So um, I think it's fair to say that sustainable measurement is probably, or my fear is that sustainable measurement is, um, is probably sort of deemed a little bit on the dry side, a little bit on the boring side. I hope not, because it's probably one of the most interesting areas that we're all working in at the moment. Um, and it's certainly the one that I get pretty, pretty passionate about. So um, this is a recent paper that we've launched with Accenture earlier in the year, and we asked a whole bunch of industry experts uh, across the world um, what they um, were seeing in terms of what kind of trends they were trying to build for the future of uh, marketing measurement. Um, and what, what those trends were, and we were able to boil them down into four, four areas. Um, I'm not going to dive into each one of these as papers available, but I wanted to just call out two of them here in terms of this building a, a world where privacy and personalization can coexist and thinking about things like such as privacy enhancing technologies or adding noise to data, changing where the, the learning is done to the device rather than on the servers, being browser independent, all those kind of things, which you'll probably hear a lot about in the next few days. But also this one around reimagining um, MMM. So... Uh, for digital use cases and more granular use cases as well. That came out loud and clear as, as a theme that you know a lot of advertisers um, and their partners were also thinking about how they evolve that for, uh, for the future. One of the other areas we've been seeing um, in the sort of sustainable measurement bucket is very much around creative. And this is a pretty well-known chart by analytics partners. And uh, we've been working with Paul and the team a bit in the last couple of years and really trying to un unpack this a little bit more. So. 70% of uh, the effectiveness in online video comes from uh, the creative quality and 30% comes from the executional elements. And I think we've been pretty spoiled with the amount of data on the executional elements. And we've certainly done a lot of work there, um, but the 70% is really interesting. But even just looking at the 30%, you know, from our platform alone, we can tell um, by increasing the number of placements, for instance, in this executional side of things, we will see an increase in the actual performance and the ROI people are getting. So we've been a bit spoiled there. We've put a lot of time and effort there, but what we've really tried to understand in the last year or so is, is that 70% and how can we actually reduce the variance and consistently get better results. And what that means is we actually have to codify a lot of the creative elements or attributes within, a, within an asset and an ad. And so this recent piece we've done with Kantar has just you know, set out to do exactly that. So we've scored a lot of the ads using their link products um, and what we found was if you can insert four consistent attributes, then you'll be in the top 94% of ads, which is awesome. So if you can showcase a unique brand, if you can get fast moving edits slash grab attention, and you can also get the products and service in there, then you'll be in the top 94% of ads consistently. So which is an awesome opportunity and, and really can, you know, be used as a lever for growth then. Um, I'll pretty much just stop there and pass over to Brian because hopefully that just gives you a bit of a feel for why this is such a great case study for sustainable measurement. So from a creative point of view, it's really getting more, more of the time, kind of find the assets, um, think of reducing that variance. And then from a measurement system and solution kind of, you know, evolving MMM to actually integrate that data um, and then enabling creative as a lever for growth. So I'll pass over to Brian now who's going to sort of go through how uh, Mondelez have achieved this. Thank you so much, Andy. What a great way to start Monday morning post uh, Freedom Weekend here in Melbourne. So I'm super excited today. Uh, good morning, all. I'm Priyanka and work as a growth and shopper analytics manager for Mondelez Australia, New Zealand, and Japan. Uh, I'm quite pleased and excited to be here uh, today in the opening presentation uh, for this wonderful event uh, organized by Measure Up, uh, Measure Up event organized by IAB Australia. So many thanks for having me here. 
Today, I'll be uh, taking you through a Mona Lisa case study, which is all about uh, how we took a creative approach and evolved our MMM program to integrate creative data elements. Uh, this study was done uh, in partnership with Nielsen and Facebook. Uh, but before I jump into the case study, let me give you a a bit of a context of our measurement ecosystem and how then this analysis feeds into. Uh, at Monolies for our key brands in a, a snacking portfolio, we regularly run these MMM analysis to understand uh, below the line as well as above the line uh, drivers of sales and ROI uh, of our marketing investment. However, uh, you know, having run those studies for quite a long time, there was a challenge which our standard MMM studies uh, were not able to solve for. Uh, us at that moment. Uh, so I'll come to that challenge on the next slide, please, Andy. And the challenge was uh, to help us really maximize our digital effectiveness of our digital media spends. Uh, as Andy mentioned before, creative or the actual copy contributes substantially to the effectiveness of campaigns. But given copy quality uh, wasn't um, an integrated data element in MMM, we didn't fully uncover how to fix this challenge with only partial visit visibility to digital effectiveness. So this slide really uh, demonstrate what a standard MMM did really well for us and what this additional deep dive, uh, which we did uh, last year, helped us to decode further. So from a standard MMM perspective, uh, I think the way it works really well for us uh, is to evaluate performance of our brand campaigns across traditional channels such as you know TV, outdoor, radio, et cetera, and also all the digital channels and partners such as Facebook. So via our measurement uh, program, we had full coverage of media channels uh, and brands, uh, and it really helped us understand uh, you know, performance of uh, digital platforms at a format level. So, you know, analyzing how is Facebook performing versus Instagram, static versus video, story versus feed, all that we were already getting a lot of information on. Uh, and it also allowed us then to, uh, you know, take all the media tactics from there and, uh, you know, build media plans uh, and scenario plan to drive growth for the brand. But where this deep dive uh, really helped us, uh, uh, you know, when we did it on Facebook, is it helped us to build standard MMM from there and allowed us to fully decode uh, the effectiveness uh, of Facebook platform by including the impact of creative elements. And as we just spoke about, it is 70% of the ROI. So really, really important to understand how that is impacting ROIs and effectiveness. So we were able to assess impact of creative uh, best practices on effectiveness. And then it allowed us to adapt both media plans and creatives uh, to drive the best balance of effectiveness and efficiency and maximize ROI of our digital investment. So moving on to the next slide, please. Yeah. Uh, this analytics project was part of a, a broader test and learn program we were running with our digital partners at that point of time. So we had a series of almost 15 test and learn experiments across our digital partners, where we used uh, our MMM based ROI and effectiveness as the final measure of success. Uh, we at Mondelez love to be on learning journey. Uh, so it's it's almost a six month cyclical process for us uh, every year. Uh, we hypothesize, we test, we measure, we apply, and then we go all over again. So it's a continuous learning process really for us. And the measure or an analyze phase of the learning program for us is usually a standard MMM. But on this occasion, we included an extension to do this deep dive MMM, which as I mentioned before, is uh, included both uh, creative and media factors to quantify role of each one of them in driving effectiveness ROI. So I have on the right hand side, some of the examples of media factors like you know reach, frequency, placement, campaign length, et cetera, how they were impacting uh, effectiveness of our brand campaigns. And some of the examples of creative factors we coded were things like, you know, was the, was the creative asset mobile optimized? At what time was the branding revealed in the digital ad? Uh, you know, what distinctive brand assets were leveraged and at what time and so on. So very robust, robust uh, creative data set was included in the analysis to quantify the impact um, of creative best practices on our brand performance. Uh, let me now give you a flavor of the output and how we used it on the next slide. So the analysis really informed us, uh, you know, uh, when you look at that first chart, so for our flagship brand, Cadbury Dairy Milk, 
the opportunity to improve performance of our digital assets was mostly in creative factors as media factors were largely optimized. And this was understandable given we, with our standard MMM programs, we were regularly optimizing our digital media execution and tactics. So we didn't expect a great deal of opportunity to sit within media tactics, but it was uh, nice to see that actually the size of opportunity was quite huge uh, when it comes to creative and it was tangible for us. Uh, then as a step two, uh, what we did was the analysis also helped us prioritize the most sizable opportunity within creative. Uh, so again, as an example here, Cadbury Dairy Milk, the, the largest opportunity within our digital creative was to ensure it was mobile optimized as uh, mobile optimized assets were almost two and a half times more effective than non-optimized. So this is just one example, but there were many more tangible creative elements which we could apply to our digital assets to make them work harder for us. And lastly, as I mentioned earlier, this analysis was part of a broader digital test and learn program. And we found data points and insights from this to be really immensely useful in informing our um, ANZ digital effectiveness playbook. Uh, this playbook um, is really a summary of eight uh, media and creative tactics, uh, which, uh, which were shared with our you know, global and uh, local marketing community to then uh, drive excellence in our future digital campaigns. That's all from my side on case study. Over to you, Andy. Right, thanks, Frank. And uh, I think we're probably being a little bit, little bit modest. I believe you also got um, some sort of recognition internally, and an, an award was given. And I, and I know this work has been recognised within uh, within Facebook as, as best in class as well. So it's an awesome piece. And I don't think a six minute case study does it quite justice. But let's um, let's have a few questions. I've got a few for you, and I think no doubt. Gayla Roy will probably jump in at some point and throw us a few curveballs as well. She's been renowned for that. So um, just on the on the, sort of the business need for this, obviously it's been a great piece of work. It's been very effective. But what was the point that you went, we have to do this? What prompted you running this analysis to then um, to then be able to get all these insights and action? Yeah. Uh, I think they've been focusing on uh, improving our media ROI since the last five years or so, and uh, why the drumbeat of uh, you know consistent measurement and then applying the learnings from our MMM program every year, we were able to get some great results uh, and momentum in our digital and media ROI. But what we also noticed was, uh, you know, because we uh, test our TV assets quite frequently and not so much the digital assets, and there are a number of digital assets which you have, our digital ROIs were uh, moderately growing as compared to uh, some of the other ones. So, and the main reason what we found was really as we were scaling up our media investments in digital, uh, you know, the efficiency lever was working really well for us, but uh, it was really the effectiveness lever, which uh, which uh, which wasn't working as great as we would have liked. And uh, really to, to be able to unpack digital effectiveness, I think understanding digital creative and a full diagnostic analysis of what elements of digital creative work and what don't work uh, is really, really important. And that was really the brief or the intention behind this analysis to be able to decode both uh, the creative and the media tactics, which can drive uh, that growth or effectiveness for the brand. Yeah, cool. Okay, that makes a, I think that makes a, a good point. As you said, a good inflection point there to delve a bit deeper into it. Um, and then why MMM? Obviously, that was one of the areas that came out as, uh, as you know, a key feature in the Accenture paper I mentioned, but why? MMM is the approach and focus to unlock this, uh, you know, the insights that you're going to use for, for digital and creative. I think uh, for us, uh, Andy, there are a few things which, uh, which, uh, uh, which is why we use MMM as the, as the lever to analyze the marketing investment. Uh, I think first one is uh, given the scale of our marketing investment as a business, we are always looking at ROI uh, as an important metric uh, in terms of, you know, if you're spending X dollars, how it is driving return for us. That's really, really important for us. Um, and uh, so, so in order to make sure that, uh, you know, the brand investments are working hard, uh, we need a consistent language in terms of uh, you know, comparing performance. Uh, and MMM really is a sustainable measurement solution. Uh, so we know when we are investing in this solution, uh, there, there are further opportunities which, we, which it'll create for us. And the other element for us is really the consistent methodology uh, across the globe uh, as well, because we are a global business. So we want to compare uh, results across not just our portfolio of snacking brands in Australia, but also similar brands, you know, Cadbury in UK, Cadbury in other parts of the world, how it is performing. So that's, that's really important for us. So it also allows us to compare 
of, with other markets, uh, with also you know other prior years, you know how your performance has evolved uh, in last five years, given given the consistency in the methodology across the globe. Uh, so that's the other bit. Um, and lastly, I think. Uh, what we have also realized over the course of last five years is the solution has been evolving constantly, uh, given the data ecosystem and the feeds from our, you know, publishers and partners is becoming richer and richer uh, consistently. So, in other, uh, I think overall, it's it would be fair to say that over over a period of five years, uh, the insights you would get from an MMM has evolved substantially, given the data feeds and the data quality and the granularity. So that's really uh, where we see the value in the solution and hopefully we should continue using it moving forward. Yeah, MMM is so hot right now. Certainly uh, five, six years ago wouldn't have been the case, but uh, it's, a, it's a very sustainable and vastly evolving um, space at the moment. All right, so something I'm very passionate around or something I push my team on in particular is around kind of turning insights into action and, and adoption. So how have you ensured that these insights have actually then been actioned and then embedded within your kind of process you were talking about earlier? Yeah, I think uh, uh, the main uh, challenge with MMM or analytical uh, work is it's quite complex when we think about the background and the work which happens. Uh, and really, uh, you know, uh, the main thing for us is really to make it easy to comprehend and uh, digestible, first of all. Uh, so the so when we share it with uh, our marketing communities, uh, you know, then they understand the implication, then they understand the insight. So really, even with this analysis, uh, our first focus was to be able to summarize and synthesize all the granular insights um, uh, from this, as well as the test and learn program, uh, which I mentioned before. And the way we sort of presented uh, the analysis was uh, really in form of a simple NZ digital effect playbook, no numbers, really just the story in terms of what you need to do. So no, no real charts were presented from this analysis to, uh, to the marketing community. It was all about, these are the eight best practices. This is what we should apply uh, from a creative point of view and from media tactics point of view to drive digital effectiveness. So I think making it really simple is very, very, very important to ensure that adoption um, is there and the understanding is there. And then lastly, I think also building um, an ecosystem which can help you, uh, you know, evaluate digital assets uh, uh, on a hundred percent basis. Uh, and really, what we have done is uh, using the machine learning testing tools, uh, we are able to then, you know, uh, uh, evaluate almost hundred percent of uh, digital assets to ensure that they are adhering to the, you know, eight uh, eight creative place we have found out works for our business or work for our brands. Uh, and technology is the enabler there because, you know, as I just said earlier, there are hundreds of creators within digital space. You can't go and pretest all of them, uh, but technology can. So that's that's the solution we uh, we try to apply, and uh, that ensures stronger adoption and compliance. Awesome. I think that's a hugely great insight for everyone there as well. The playbook to try and get everybody on board and then the sort of machine learning and working with partners then to actually scale that and make it consistent and hold people accountable. So, all right, last question for me. Uh, I think we're probably at time unless Gabe wants to jump in with one, but in terms of recommendations, Gabe said this earlier, like practical advice, um, how would you suggest to other advertisers about to go on this journey about, you know, improving the creative through MMM? I think first thing uh, again is a uh, culture of experimentation. So like I said, this this uh, whole program was all about uh, having a lot of tests and loans uh, and then to measure them is the key. And making measurement a cyclical process is uh, is really important. One off diff, uh, dip will tell you something, but it won't uh, it won't drive the best value or the best outcome from an MMM study. So really, you know, experimenting, making changes, and then measuring again and going into that cyclical process is the key. Uh, and ensuring you are doing enough variation. So, you know, new media tactics, different types of creatives, different combination of media tactics and creative, and then measuring it again to see, you know, which, uh, which, uh, which platforms or which tactics are working best for your brand because a single solution doesn't work for all. It really depends on what type of brand you have, uh, and what type of uh, uh, communication needs you have. So uh, that's that's really important, experimentation. Uh, and then building the data ecosystem, uh, like I said before, for all your you know, pre-test, post-test uh, consumer research, and equally challenging your measurement partners uh, to ensure that they can integrate uh, some of those uh, data sets into MMM. Uh, because when different data sources come together, that's where the best value comes out of the analysis. Uh, and that's really, really, really important. And lastly, uh, I think uh, collaboration uh, is 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 much more important than any of the previous steps because you know 
I can analyze, I can evaluate, but then application sits with lots of other teams cross-functionally. So, you know, making sure that cross-functional teams are um, have their buy-in into the methodology, your leadership team has buy-in into the methodology, uh, and not just internally within your uh, organization, but externally with your media agencies, with your creative partners, with, with your platform partners, just ensuring that everyone is working towards the same goal, uh, really, really uh, then sort of makes the best use of this sort of analytical work. Awesome. Well, you certainly challenge us in all the right ways to, uh, to work with you in this. So we appreciate your partnership in this and thank you for taking us through that great case study. Gay, I can see your face. Are we yeah, on time? No, that, that's fantastic. Um, we're on time, but I'm really, I'm really um, excited with that case study. And one thing I really love, Priyanka, how you have, how you've managed it is the ownership over the project. So, you know, the client owning the project, working with their partners, making sure it's across the same across the board. Cause I know, I know it's not always bringing everyone um, together uh, along the same journey at the same time so that's that's fantastic I want to get you back next year because I want to find out more around I guess some of the lessons that you've had and how they work across different platforms if there's some sort of rules of thumb that you found that work across different environments and even from all your um, previous work with tv how that sort of you know if it's challenged your thinking what it's what it's done to change creative so I, I really love that I won't try and get that you to answer that in 30 seconds I think that'd be a little unfair but um thank thank you both for that um I'm sure we'll get more questions that we'll follow up on afterwards thanks Andy thanks Priyanka thanks Gay thanks Andy Pleasure.